Hi there, this is Jody Clark bringing you a tutorial today for Spectrum Noir on how to color clothing folds using reds. Um, to begin with, I have already colored a section of the design to show you how to incorporate shadow areas and highlight areas to make the clothing folds appear as if they are behind other folds or in front of other folds. To begin with, we need to look at the artist design and evaluating the lines of the folds to see which pieces look like they are on top and which ones look like they are behind. So what I've done is I've taken my lightest color, which is going to be CR5, and I've just kind of mapped out where it appears to me that the, the shadow areas are going to be. So looking at this fold line here, this little piece in back is going to be behind this piece in front, so this piece in front is going to cast a shadow up that edge, and so I've just drawn that in with my CR5. And then I've made my way across a little bit, defining the shadow here, the shadow here. This little piece here, I want it to appear like it's on top. So what I've gone and done is colored the shadow at the edge, and then I've also colored a little center pleat because there was a little dip in the artist drawn line there, indicating that it bends inwards. So I'm casting a little shadow there. And then I would also draw a shadow with the inside edge of that. With this piece going in front, there's going to be shadow folding around both sides. Same thing I've done here. And then this piece also will have a little pleat and then the shadow moving on to the next piece. It will also have a shadow on both sides. So once I've determined where my shadow areas are going to be, I actually start with my darkest color, which in this case is going to be DR7. And with my DR7, I'm just going to go over those shadow areas, starting at the heaviest part at the bottom and tapering to a thinner line at the top. For the pleat, I'm just going to draw a little angle on each corner and then go up to a little faded line. So this piece I'm getting the inside and outside edges because I want that to look like it's popping forward. Same thing with our little pleat here. And this piece as well. Once I have my shadows mapped in there, or drawn in there, I'm going to move on to my second darkest color, which is going to be DR6. With DR6, I'm going to begin where my DR7 was, and color over that just slightly, and out a little bit farther, towards that highlight area. And you can see how it's picking up some of the DR6 there, at the edge of the DR7. I'm using that DR6 to sort of soften and blend out the DR7 just a little bit as I'm going. following over the edge of the DR7 and out into that highlight area a little bit. And then once I have that done, I'm going to use my DR3. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go over what I've colored already and also out into that open area a little bit. Bringing that red out into the fabric.
All right, before I move on to my lighter red colors, I'm going to fill in the shadow underneath this upper part of the dress because it is going to cast a shadow onto this piece below. So I would just follow along the bottom edge of that and create that shadow right there. Of course, I'm only doing a section right now, but the whole dress is handled the same way. That was DR7. Now coming in with the DR6. So over the edge of that a little bit. And we'll also use the DR3. So soften that out a little bit. All right. I'm going to carry on this piece, the DR3, out just a little bit farther because it's a pretty big section there. And maybe here a little bit as well. Okay. All right. Now we're ready for our lightest two shades for our highlight areas. CR7 will be next. And the process is going to be the same. Just kind of go over a little bit what you've done already. Carry that out into the white area. I like to sort of swipe back and forth over what I've colored already to help soften those colors and pull them into the new color that I'm using. So it pulls it out into my CR7. For this first round here is CR5. And here I'm just going to go kind of at the edge of the CR7 and out to the highlight area. And you can kind of tell how everything is sort of softening and blending together. And at this point, you can see that it's actually kind of lightening my shadow areas a little bit, which is okay because we're actually going to do another layer of the same colors and blend all this together. So you can see there's quite a difference between this upper part and this lower part at this point. And what we're going to do now is repeat the process with the same colors, same sequence, adding another layer on top of this. And that's really going to pop the colors out and make them very vib vib vibrant as you see above here. So with the DR7 once again, I'm going to draw in my shadows. And you can see already how much more color it's holding this time with that base layer already underneath it. Follow that with our DR6, repeating the same process, just going over the DR7 and out a little bit farther.
follow that with DR3. You can already see how much more vibrant this is becoming with the second layer put down. And we will come in with CR7. And blending those colors out into the highlight area. And then our last layer will be again CR5. We're going to take that out to the highlight area and also use it to sort of blend the rest of the colors together. If there's any areas you still feel you want touched up a little bit, maybe I want a little bit more red or darker shadows in here, you can still go back and add another layer. I just added a little DR7. You'll want to repeat the same process then, come back in with your DR6. Followed with the DR3. CR7. Finally, CR5. And there you have it. These are the beautiful folds that you can achieve with your Spectrum Noir markers. For other great tutorials, check out Spectrum Noir on their website at www.spectrumnoir.com. Also find them on Pinterest. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Can't wait to see what you create.